Everybody, Raul here for Bass Musician Magazine, and today we have the great honor and pleasure of presenting and chatting with directly do São Paulo, Brasil, Alana Alberg. Yay! <laughs> Why? Thank you, thank you, Alana. So we've got a lot of exciting things to talk about, but as always, we like to start from the beginning. How did you get started in music and on bass? So I started when I was 13 years old, when I heard the bass the first time, I just fall in love with, and I can't explain, like, I think it's normal, we can't explain why we fall in love with someone or mm -hmm. with some. And then until between 13 and 17 years old, I was just playing rock music, but heavy metal, trash metal, mm. death metal. So on this period, I had bands with my brothers. One played guitar, another one played drums. And we did original songs and cover songs. And it was really cool because at this time, I could develop my hearing. I could develop the technique and play like in a strong way, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know the word in English, like pegada, when you play with pressure, you know? Okay, sure. Yeah, so it was good. Uh, I started with heavy metal and death metal. And then, um, actually, I didn't plan to be a musician, like, professionally. My plan was be a psychologist. Mm. And, and then I burned in a really small city in Sao Paulo. Mm -hmm. And then went to university on Rio de Janeiro, which is a huge city. And then I went there to do psychology. In, on university and then I was there I could I was like 19 years old and then I realized that I could be a professional musician because I saw a lot of professional musicians mm -hmm. getting money have a good life yeah and then I realized I really want to do this like my career and then I start to run into it and I never stopped it got you so are you self-taught or did you get a teacher so at this period, on the beginning, like in thir between 13 and 17, was self-taught, totally. Okay. And everything, I didn't have computer to learn the songs, like today it's easy, you know? You yeah. can have everything on computer if you, learn, if you want to learn a song, but on the past, I could. So I just had like the CD to learn the song, and I had no clue about harmony or any theory, I just like hearing and trying to play and then when I went to Rio when I realized I wanted to be a musician I started to have class with particular teachers different teachers and do courses and yeah I, I had a lot of teachers got you so in your journey of playing a lot of it has been kind of jumping in and so you've done a variety of different gigs between playing with your brother's band early on You've played on cruise ships, if I remember correctly? Yes. My professional life started playing on theater, on musical theater. Okay. So I did it a lot. It was really good. I, I learned how to read charts. And it was good for money as well in Brazil because you have big seasons on theater, you know? So you have like three months season, this musical theater. So... You know, it's comfortable. Mm -hmm. And then I worked on TV shows as well. Okay. In Brazil, and the global TV show is like the biggest channel in Brazil. So it was a really good experience. And then I started to do recordings and online recordings. And I have the audio interface mm -hmm. and only studio as well. And I play with different artists in Brazil doing tours for all Brazil. And I did one contract with Carnival Cruise Line okay. to, to learn English as well, because my English was terrible before this contract, you know? And then I received these invites for the day. They invite me mm -hmm. and, oh, wow, that's, that's interesting because I can play American songs, like with work with American people. Was uh, I had these cures as well and improved my English and was really, really good experience. Very cool. Well, and I always find very fascinating because Brazil has a very rich musical background. And when you look back well before you're very young 
And but before your years, when you had you know the people like you know Caetano Veloso and Maria Bethania and Javan and I'm I'm sure hopefully they're still around. Yes, absolutely. But it's also fascinating that with music flowing from the rest of the world, I was always really impressed with the heavy metal scene in Brazil. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's true. Yes, and. I would get sometimes CDs from Brazil from rock bands and I noticed they sang in English because it was the language of the song, you know, whereas you have all of these great other Brazilian tunes where they they sing in Portuguese, but you have this this transition. So culturally, it's kind of an invasion and and I don't know it, it's they seem the Brazilians seem very accepting of these new and maybe not so new because you played at a young age, you know, but the external influences, music that comes from the United States or music that comes from Europe. I know a lot of the big tours love going and playing in Brazil and, and because they get great fans and people will come to concerts. Yeah, that's that's a good point because American music may uh, kind of dominated the world. Like mm -hmm. I went to Nepal and then I was there like in the in a house, a live house, you know, in the place when you have live music. Sure. And I was trying to listen like Nepal songs and I just hear American songs, the songs I can hear here, you know? Yeah. And yeah, this American kind of have this power to be in every place. But even that, I think our music is really, really, really rich and really unique and never gonna die, you know, mm -hmm. how I said, like Djavan, Caetano Veloso, Chico Buarque, Elis Regina, Dominguinhos, they are, um, Milton Nascimento, mm -hmm. they are like uh, so unique and so important to us, so it's like different public, public, mm -hmm. different kind of person, like sure. we have people consume American music here, but we have a lot of people consume Brazilian music, so yeah, but it's true. We have American music and ever. <laughs> yes. Well, and I've always found it very interesting that the the direction that the music has flowed, because a lot of the music's come from the U.S., it's gone to Brazil. But a lot of the Brazilian music hasn't come up to the United States. And so if it weren't for Sergio Mendes, and back in what Brazil says, 60-something, you know, we wouldn't have heard hardly any Brazilian music. And it's not until other performers incorporated Brazilian music, like Paul Simon, uh, you'll get you know Sting, people will bring in an occasional bossa, and, and there we go, okay, now, now I know. And I was very lucky. I lived outside of the country for quite a few years, and there I was getting Brazilian CDs, but they were coming through Sony Japan. And so they don't have any of the writing. It, the writing's all in Japanese. And so all, most of my Javan collection is in Japanese. And I'm like, oh, I'm so lucky I got, because the music, I love it. But it didn't come through American labels. They kind of kept the Brazilian music. And so I always feel that we're missing a lot of the lovely Brazilian music that just doesn't reach us. And maybe now a little more with the computer. Now, that leads yeah. me to your YouTube channel. You've got a, a huge following. I mean, you've got 40, 000, over 40,000 subscribers, and, and you, but you only have seven videos. And I think this is, this is very interesting how, how you have done this. <laughs> and it's a combination of American music and you've got some Brazilian music. So it's, 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 it's very nice. Tell us a little bit about that whole YouTube phenomena. Yes, so that's interesting because I never thought like I want to be a YouTuber, you know, that never was like my dream. I never realized that it's just I want to play. I want to play with people. I want to play on the gigs. But in 2015, Mark Base endorsed me and then I had to produce video to them. Mm -hmm. I did one, like three videos for them. One of them has 10 million views. It's like crazy. And I think this was like the boom, like 
a lot of people know me because this video I'm playing Sir Duke, uh, Stevie Wonder song. Mm -hmm. And but you know, I was really busy working in Brazil with another stop. It wasn't like my really job producing videos to YouTube channel. And I am really busy. <laughs> that I'm glad for. I'm always working, working, working. But now I am planning to produce more video to YouTube, and because it's really great, people from all the world can know you and mm -hmm. support you and give you the energy. And yeah, and I never really worked on YouTube channel, and I have this month of people yeah. want to see me, and I think if I started to really. <laughs> Uh, work on that, uh, where I can go, you know? So now I have this plan because everything here is stocked. So this is my plan. Invest in more time and energy producing videos. Excellent. Well, and this is probably a very good time to talk a little bit about your gear because you mentioned Mark Base. You've got your, your Mark Base gear. You also had mentioned Focusrite, which is, I guess, the interface that you're using to do your YouTube stuff and other collaborations yeah i use uh fox rights it's just amazing for recording my videos because it's so like practice design so great and the sound is amazing it's like perfectly i love this is the uh two two one two i two i don't know how me say english so it's perfect and I have my mark base here. When I record it, I plug it in on my mark base and then go to my interface. Mm -hmm. So it sounds even better. And so Byte Base, it's my new endorsement. I'm so, 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 so happy. I can explain you like <sighs> Byte Base is just unbelievable. Wow. You can see how beautiful it is. This is like so, so beautiful. The material, the quality, I have my name here. And I designed it because this is what a bite base is. You can design your own base mm -hmm. and choose a jazz base. But they have P base, they have another models. So I just chose every single thing here and it's amazing you have in your hand something you designed. And the sound is just so, so, so powerful. Like when I plug it in the first time I couldn't believe how powerful it is, how the sound came is so easy. And I didn't know but they have their they develop their own pickups. Yes. So this original bike base pickups took to them four years to develop it mm -hmm. and it's unbelievable i'm so in love and it's so comfortable to play it's like some songs was hard to play and then on this bass it's easy to play it's crazy yeah. <laughs> it's like a perfect i am so in love so let's talk a little bit more about that bass because there's two things one it's a passive instrument because bite basses are making passive but their pickups are so hot that I find they very much are as loud as my active bass pickups yeah. without being active, which is a really cool thing. But I think a lot of people don't necessarily understand how you can design your own bass, but Byte Bass does this for everybody. They have something called the configurator, and then you can pick and choose the things that you like. And that's exactly what you did, if I'm not mistaken. Exactly, exactly. Everyone can design your own base. Everyone can, can has a base with your name. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's an am amazing idea. I think they, oh, I am so glad that Wolfgang had this idea and what it is <laughs> to work because it's so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you said is so powerful. You have one. I, I have done a review of one. I don't have one myself. I'll have to think about one i had to send it back that that's the thing when sometimes we do reviews it was a beautiful it was a steampunk base and so it had all the design of the gears and the inlays the artwork and the finishing is is exquisite the other thing how long did it take you to get your base from the time you designed it to when you got it in brazil so fast so fast it was like two weeks or three weeks 
it's so wow. fast. Wow. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I was prepared to wait a lot and then, oh my God, it's here. <laughs> so, it's so cool. So cool to have something you design it. I am so in love. That's so nice. And are there any other things in your gear, other things that you use that help you get your particular sound? So I have another bass. Uh, I have the T-Bass. And now oh, I have the Evo Straps. Okay. It's an amazing brand. They did this for this bass, like per uh, match perfectly. And so good material as well. Um, so I have the T-Bass because it's really different sound, you know? It's a unique sound, so sometimes I want this sound. But I'm not a really pedal person. Okay. You know, I like the original sounds of the... And I don't use a lot of plugins as well. I want to hear the sounds I like straight away in my hands. I think the sounds in your hands mostly, the mm -hmm. sound came mm -hmm. from your hands. So I like to use my loop pedal. Okay. Um, my brother played drums, so we have a lot of fun here playing drums and bass with loop pedals. And yeah, I think that's it. Okay. And I know that your bite bass came with strings of its own. Are you still playing on the, the original strings? Yeah, yeah. I still, because it's really good. I know that they were very, they felt great when I was trying the, the one I was trying. So great, so great. Excellent. <laughs> So, and then looking ahead, I know Brazil, unfortunately, as far as the pandemic goes, things are not very good at all. Um, they're getting better in the United States. We're starting to see some tour dates and things opening up, people getting back together. But we're looking forward to that happening in Brazil, hopefully sooner than later. But what plans do you have? You mentioned that you've got a plan just in case, no matter what happens. Yeah, so I talked a little bit about because... This is my internet plan, you know, I want focus now on internet, on YouTube, in YouTube and on Instagram, mm -hmm. because I have a lot of fans, a lot of people really like my job and like to see me playing. They always send me messages like, please post more videos, it's so good to see you playing. A lot of people send me messages like, I started to play bass because of you, or like I was 10 years without play bass, and then I saw you and I come back to play bass, you inspire me to play, and that's so nice. So I wanted to focus more on the internet now, and I have a specific plan with uh, with my brother, like uh, outdoor stuff, mm -hmm. so it would be like a big thing, so I have to invest a lot of things, and but I'm really excited, I think it'll be, really nice excellent and where is the best place if people want to know what you're up to is it Al at alana alberg on social media so you can go to instagram where i post like my like every day the things i'm doing in my life mm -hmm. the things and interacting with people as well sure. Uh, sure uh it's really cool some days i post like tell me a song to play <sighs> and then tell me a song to play i just play it's really fun and on youtube and where I go, I post like more different videos, just playing or talking about. Now I'm gonna have videos talking about bite bass and another gear as well. Very nice. Well, Alana, we appreciate you taking time to chat with us and tell us your journey, and share with us the exciting new bite bass that is always very cool. And you know, it is the instrument that gives you your voice, and so when it when it fits perfectly, that is. Of a big moment of happiness for so many bass players because many times they're searching and many can spend a whole lifetime looking for that perfect instrument. They don't find, they keep looking because this one's okay, but eh, maybe this other one, but then they keep looking, looking. And so I'm very happy for you that you have found this, this lovely instrument. So folks, you've seen her here, Alana Alberg coming to you directly from Sao Paulo, on Bass Musician Magazine. Thank you so much for having me. It was a big pleasure. <laughs>